Hi, I'm Mark Randolph, co-founder of Netflix and six other companies. Over the years, I've heard that will never work thousands of times, but I've learned there are things we all can do to increase the chances that they will. So join me for That Will Never Work. Hello, everybody, and welcome to That Will Never Work. Today, I have with me Riley Clark, who is the founder of a company called Floor, which is trying to disrupt, wait for it, the art market. Uh, and what's interesting about this is uh, this is kind of an idea which seems to keep recurring every few years. Uh, everyone takes a new whack at it. What is the whack here that's going to work? Riley, welcome to That Will Never Work. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So do I have that right? This is about art, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, it is. And it recurs for a reason. You know, this is a fundamental human impulse. We as human beings, we do shelter, we do fire, we do visual arts. In my mind, it's uh, right up there with music and entertainment, Spotify and Netflix. So I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Um, and I'm happy to talk about why other folks haven't gotten it quite right and why um, we're excited to take a new approach. What's the problem? I mean, listen, I've got yeah. art on my walls. Uh, there's mm -hmm. probably more art on more walls than there are Netflix subscribers. Uh, it seems to be working. Where's the, uh, where's the breakdown here? Yeah, well, unfortunately, if you look at the numbers, it's not working. Um, <laughs> most people feel disconnected from art. And interestingly, it's not even about the money, right? There is money, there is interest in art, but none of it's um, going into the market. None of it's helping artists like... There's a number going out there that only 2% of high net worth individuals buy art. Um, the problem is actually much more fundamental than that. The problem is you have to take that first step when it comes to visual art. You have to walk into a gallery. You have to find an artist who resonates with you. You have to have that moment where it all clicks for you. And then when you've had that moment, that's done. You've, you've been bitten by the bug. Problem is, most people never have that moment. Problem is, there are no structures in place to help the majority of people have that moment, have that first encounter, have that access to art, and that's what we want to change. So you really think that's the problem, is that people don't have access to, uh, to buying art not that meaning, way? Not meaningful access. And again, it's worth noting that the problem isn't even about buying art. The problem is about taking that first step. The problem is there are creators out there who are right for me. There are artists out there who are speaking to me, but you'll never find them, right? The chances of you finding them in a gallery system are incredibly low. The chances of you finding them on a search engine are incredibly low. And I guess a lot of where I'm coming from is uh, as a young person, you know, I'm 25 and Generation Z, we especially feel disconnected from the art world that exists in New York and exists in LA and exists in um, these urban centers where it's pretty narrowly defined what art means, what art looks like, how you engage with it. We as a generation are disengaging. And I think that's an issue. I think that we want to engage with art on our own terms, on our own time. And that's, again, uh, what we're all about. Well, I'm going to, I'm latching on to something you said, which is, I think, 2% of high net worth individuals buy art. Is, mm -hmm. is, did I hear that correctly? Mm-hmm. That strikes me as being a pretty fundamental message of some sort. Why isn't the conclusion that 98% of high net worth individuals don't want to buy art? Or do you really think yeah. there is some simple thing that unlocks it and all of a sudden 60% of those people buy art? Simple? Absolutely not. Um, you say a lot of things in your writing and in your speaking that I really like. You know, the idea that no one knows anything, that um, big structural systems level problems like this aren't easily solved, which is why when you hear headlines about NFTs and different things, um, I'm suspicious, right? Because it's not one killer app. It's not one lightning bolt moment that solves the problem. It's a super complex systems level problem. The reason most people never buy art is because most people never take that first step. Very few of those people walk into a gallery. Very few of those people buy from a gallery. Very few people, few of those people um, continue on their journey. Um, whenever I talk with a collector, 
you know, they always tell me, oh, I met this neighbor who collected art and who loved it and who shared their passion with me and now I love it. Or I just had this moment with an artist while I was traveling. They're great, meaningful, personal stories, but they're totally incidental, right? They're totally accidental. What we're talking about is trying to imagine um, new systems for people to engage with art. Like the reason I wanted, to, uh, the reason I reached out to you is because you know you at Netflix fundamentally changed the system by which people engage with entertainment, right? This fundamental human impulse. Before you would walk into a brick and mortar space, have a pretty bad customer experience, and walk out with something that maybe you liked enough to watch, right? There's a real parallel with the system around visual art right now. And just like Netflix changed things with personalization and democratization and technology and convenience and comfort and fun, uh, we think we can do this, something similar with visual art. Well, I have a million directions I can go here. So why don't we try narrowing it? What, what specifically would you like to, uh, to explore today? Yeah, well, specifically, you know, you've really been there, done that. Um, I really, I really do admire everything you've done and I appreciate the stories you shared. A lot of the similarities strike me, but a lot of the differences strike me as well. You know, um, in some ways it's never been easier to do what we're doing. In some ways it's never been harder. Like we can do things, uh, for free with APIs and, you know, in, in very little time that would have taken millions of dollars in an office space and whole funding rounds to do back in the early days of Netflix. And in a way that's great in a way that's a real challenge. You can do a lot more with a lot less as an entrepreneur, which means that you have to. So my questions are all about really getting started, really going to the next level, going from not nothing, but something to something, you know. And have you started? Do you have something yet? I mean, do you have an approach yes. that you're taking that you think is going to uh, make you the transform the buying of art? Yeah, yeah. I'm speaking about this because I've been really pleased with um, the response from our open alpha. So you can go on to our website. You can check out our open alpha. That's fleur.ai, F-L-E-U-R.ai. Um, what happens is you take a quiz. We get to know you. We get to know your tastes before you even articulated them usually. And we f connect you directly with artists who are right for you. It sounds awfully fundamental, but the problem is awfully fundamental. Most people don't even feel comfortable saying what their tastes are, saying what they like, expressing themselves when it comes to art. So they disengage. They never take that first step. They never walk down the path, even though they want to. So like 90% of our users have never really engaged with art in the past. That's really exciting to me. So, so Riley, I'm, um, Tell me what you're doing and tell me what the pro how, give me some sense of whether this is working or not. You say you do have a website mm -hmm. and people are buying art from you or through you. I mean, that's what I'm, let's, let's just figure out whether you, yeah, whether, yeah. This, whether this is sure. conceptual or whether you're actually struggling with something real. Sure. We are struggling with something real. Um, let me actually share a bit of the story. Cause I think again, this marketplace idea keeps coming up which is actually um, speaks to the original point you made, you, you first made that this people keep tackling this issue, but they keep tackling it as a marketplace. People think that the way people want to engage with art is as a marketplace. And that's just not how most people engage with art. Most of the time, that's certainly not how most people begin their journey with art. Um, we started as a marketplace, for example, uh, when we all got together uh, in the midst of the pandemic, we wanted to make art accessible for everyone. So we started working with a younger, more diverse body of artists selling to a younger, more diverse body of collectors. It was fun. It was going well, but it wasn't a systems level change. It wasn't going to be big or, or, or important uh, enough for, uh, change for artists. And we were still extracting value from artists in the form of commission. So we were wondering what to do. And friends and peers kept coming to us asking, hey, you know, I really want to find ABC artists or I really want to find XYZ artist, or they would come to us and say, I don't know what I want, um, but can you help me find it? Can you help me articulate my tastes and help me find artists who are speaking directly to it? So enough people came to us with this problem that we decided, why don't we build technology that does this? Why don't we build a platform that does this for them? So we built out, um, you know, curation algorithms and some basic artificial intelligence models that would get to know people's tastes, oftentimes before they'd even articulated it themselves find them artists who speak to that taste and then connect the two. Um, 
Now what we've done is we've launched this as an open alpha, so getting people on board, usually people who have never engaged with art in the past, and connecting them with their first artists, feeding them more, trying to create as many of those um, moments as possible. The next step is making those recommendation algorithms better, but it's also creating points of engagement on top of that, on top of that platform. It's finding new ways for people to engage. Once you connect somebody, do they buy a piece of art from you? Is that what the model is here? That's definitely in the cards for the future, but again, most people don't engage with art just to buy it. Most people want to engage with uh, art because they feel a sense of relationship to an artist. So to answer the what's your, underlying what's question- What's your company's purpose? Are you trying to sell art or not trying to sell art? That's, I'm still confused. Right. Well, I think the underlying question is maybe what is the business model? How do we make money? Um, which is, which is the, the point I'm getting to, you know, <laughs> which is the point I'm getting to subscriptions, right? People want to feel a sense of connection with an artist. People want a personal parasocial relationship with a creator. Um, they do that over time. They do that with, through sustained engagement. So, and it is only then that they buy if they buy at all. So for us, you know, rather than compete with every other art dealer in the world for that small percentage of people buying art that small percentage of the time, why don't we actually create those points of connection? Why don't we actually help people build relationships with artists that make them feel more confident, that make them engage with art more and actually monetize that time, monetize that engagement? Um, yeah. So Riley, I will dig in here for a second. Um, and just to, the, the, the thing that I'm struggling with is not just me struggling with it. It's trying to get a really clear picture of what the point is. Um, and I can't tell whether that's just a challenge of articulating it or whether you don't have this really clear, narrow point of what you're trying to accomplish. Because if you don't, it's, that's just the first step toward flailing. Um, for example, I mean, you mentioned Netflix a few times, and it's that and every other startup I've been involved with, there was always this very, very clear thing that we were trying to do, what, how we would measure success, what we were trying to get an end user to do. Um, because you have to do the first one before you even get permission to do the second one. And, and I'll also mention one thing just to draw the line between perhaps what Netflix is doing, what it sounds like you're trying to do, is that Netflix, we were not trying to create demand for something. This was not like only 2% only of all people in the world watch videos. And we're going to create a new way to watch videos, which allows people to watch videos. No, there was 9,000 blockbuster stores. You know, there was a hundred million people who watched videos. We were just trying to do it a different way. We we're trying to solve some of the problems of how that worked. But there was a very, very established market about that we knew about. So our focus was not can we get someone to watch movies? It was can we get them to accept selecting them and having them delivered to them in a different way? Very narrow problem. Not saying it was easy, it was brutal because there was a lot of uphill you had to do to get someone to get it in the mail and get it in two days versus drive 10 minutes down the street to your blockbuster. Nonetheless, I wasn't trying to get people to watch more movies. And that's why... I am really was trying at the beginning to fo get you focused on what's the problem you're really trying to solve. And I'm a little scared. I'm not there yet, but I'm a little scared. This is the classic. I have this solution and now I'm just looking for a problem. I really want to use AI to predict what you're going to like. Now let me figure out some reason why that should exist as opposed to going the other direction. And sure. whether it's you articulating it more clearly to investors or to advisors or to customers, that would be a really, really powerful thing to do. Sure. That's, that's a good note, and I appreciate that. That is a kind of young entrepreneur articulation issue. 
But I want to be really clear about something. We're not creating demand. The demand is there. Everyone wants to engage with art. Now, let's be clear. I say engage with art, find connection with artists, relate to artists as human beings. As but I, I call bullshit not, on not you. I call arts. bullshit on you, Riley. Okay. okay. You have you have ninety eight. You have a huge number of people who have lots of money. Okay. And ninety eight percent of them don't by your own number. Mm-hmm. If they wanted to, there is not some huge fundamental. It's not illegal. I mean, listen, it was illegal, but everyone wanted it. You would still see 20% of them buying it. I mean, it's it just, there, there's something you're missing here. That, that I, I, in other words, I don't accept your starting premise. The, the, if, or I want you to say, I can mm-hmm. unlock that there's some, there's some fundamental reason why no mm-hmm. one buys art. And here's yeah. what it is. But th- that's what I mean by this real clarity of it. Or you go, sure. for the 2%, who buy art, fine. That's a huge multi-billion dollar market. And I think we can disrupt that because we can do it for half the price. Or we think there's this category of, I mean, I don't, uh, who, who, in other words, that's what I'm trying to look for is some real clear problem. So I'm sorry to interrupt mm-hmm. you. No, of course. But, but I, I get what you want to do. You want to do basically a cinematch, you know, for art. Basically say, which is, we great if I could predict what someone likes so that I can introduce them to artists they're going to like and establish this connection with an artist they're going to like. But that's not a yeah. business, or at least I want to hear how that's a business. Sure, sure. Well, and again, and again, I, I appreciate where you're coming from, actually. <laughs> I appreciate the hard questions. I know this is, this is kind of fun and, well, and, and, and actually well-meaning, and that does matter. Yeah, I mean... The problem is people do want art in their lives. People do want to call, people are calling out for art, but let's be honest, galleries are terrible. Like who, especially what young person who doesn't come from that world wants to walk into a gallery and be looked down on, be humiliated. You wonder why people aren't engaging with art. That's why, right? Because the pathways that exist today, the user experiences that are available to you today totally suck. Um, Surprise, surprise, most people aren't doing it. And surprise, surprise, most young people aren't doing it. Most people in you know, the technology industry aren't doing it. Um, when I was a you know, young Stanford grad studying art history and wanting to you know, open up access to art for my peers, everyone told me, no one wants, no, your generation doesn't like to buy art. Your generation is all about experiences. And I think the way that we engage, people don't change, right? Not fundamentally. The same things that we're doing now, we're doing when we were cavemen. And whether that's, having music in our lives, having entertainment in our lives, or having visual art in our lives, that hasn't changed, right? The thing that's changed is we live in a system where access to art is dominated by terrible user experience, brick and mortar galleries, pretentious art advisors, things that aren't for most people, explicitly, deliberately, by design. That's something that we're looking to change. That's something that we're looking to unlock by creating um, not just a fun techie, you know, recommendation engine, but a comfortable place for people to land where they can scratch this fundamental human itch and do it as a subscription platform. Well, I'm fighting to uh, mm-hmm. not say, prove that to me. Okay. Because uh, I don't believe it. All right. But you know, okay. listen, you know, uh, I love people proving me wrong. Mm-hmm. But... I would love for you to demonstrate that all these impediments are in fact the thing that will unlock, that removing these impediments will unlock it. I, okay. Because well, I don't, let's talk about, I don't, okay. I don't, people, people have been, instru- or I put it this way. I haven't heard what is the piece that you do that eliminates all these things? It's automatically predict what someone wants. And that, that has gotten rid of the snooty art advisor has gotten rid of the gallery, the intimidation. And that does it. Is that, is that the point? No, the way that people um, get involved with art, first of all, it's social, right? You, you do it in a, in, 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 you don't do it in a vacuum, you do it in a social way. 
then you create content, you context, you engage with contents, so you educate yourself, you learn the language, you find artists who you like, you figure out your own tastes, and then you're really in it. Then you're at a place where you can engage more, bring in more people, buy if you so wish. The problem is every quote unquote solution that exists in this space, and you set it up top, there are a lot of them. There are a lot of people trying to crack this egg. They're all about that last pillar. They're all about the final mile. The problem is they're all solving for that 2% of high net worth individuals. They're all preaching to the choir. Um, really, this is an approach issue. This is an audience issue. No one is preaching to the congregation and no one's doing that with more than rhetoric. You know, the NFT crowd talks a big game about democratizing art, but they're actually not preaching to the congregation. That's actually not built into the product. Uh, it's not built into their design. It's, um, you know, like you said, there's no one killer app. There's no one technology or tool or special sauce that's going to fix this problem. It's about connecting with this kind of untapped audience uh, in ways that work for them and making them feel comfortable and confident and actually creating ways for them to take that first step um, better than existing. And today. what is that step that you're gi giving them, to, that first step you're going to give them to take? I mean, it's our platform. That's the whole, that's the whole product. And the platform is you come in and what happens? You come in, you, you take quizzes, you give, you give us a sense of your taste, and then you in, in start engaging with artists who are right for you. And do you, and, and, and this is showing to resonate so far that it's working. Yeah, in a in a limited way. Now, I'm not you know one of these people who's going to say you know we have this figured out. I am very aware of the facts that we don't. I'm very aware of the facts that we're three uh, founders who are really passionate about this issue, who really want to create ac uh, access to art for everyone, who want to create better structures for artists. That's why we're doing this, um, and we're iterating. We're experimenting. Okay. We're finding early success. I understand a bit better. Yeah. So. Um as you've seen by my struggle to mm -hmm. to get it, and I'll be quite honest, by mm -hmm. my cynicism sure. um, is basically because pointing out all the reasons it doesn't work um, mm -hmm. and hasn't worked in the past is not that useful. Um, sure. And so I accept the fact that it hasn't worked. I understand that there's no sense. But what I'm really was trying to get to and what I think you have to get to if you're not there already, and what I think more importantly, every entrepreneur has to get to is as this very, very clear sense of what my hypothesis is about what is going to unlock it, mm -hmm. what I expect the unlocking to look like. In other words, mm -hmm. what do I want to see happen if my premise is correct? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, in my opinion, those things should be very, very narrow and very, very concrete. Mm -hmm. That if I'm right and I do this small thing, then the following thing will happen. And the danger is building out some, something big and complicated. Mm -hmm. with, and then, lo and behold, it doesn't work. And you never then you go, okay, great. Mm -hmm. I'm now added to the, the list of things that don't work, which is not... It certainly isn't very fulfilling. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't, is not what a startup should be about. It's really saying narrowly defining what is the problem and trying to solve, but not in this generic way that people don't buy art. Yes, that's the world you're living in, but way, 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 way closer. Here's what the specific problem is that uh, my hypothesis is that this might do it. And here is the mm -hmm. test I'm going to run. And here is the, what I evidence that I want to see that if I'm doing it correctly at a very, very narrow thing. If, for mm -hmm. example, you go, it's my taste quiz. Well, then I want to see on the back end some very, very clear metric of what happens if I did a good job. But more importantly, mm -hmm. that doing a good job in a taste quiz results in some concrete action that I actually mm -hmm. want. And, and, and you have limited people. You probably have even less money and even less resources. You've got to narrowly focus on it. Because what you have to demonstrate in this first iteration is that my premise, 
which is that doing, ta- if, if it is, doing this, building this platform where I match people up with artists who they resonate with because of a taste thing, does the following. And wow, it does. It's amazing how well it does it. But it, 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 uh, and, and that's, the, and, I, and I, 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 don't, I don't sense that you have that narrow focus, which means, which makes me, um, concerned about your ability to actually um, achieve it. Uh, you, you have a good vision, it sounds like, of what you want to build, but not this very narrow sense of what specifically in this first iteration you want it to accomplish. It does not need to be it makes money. It does not need to be it sells art. Yes, I'd like there to be a path to eventually there's a monetization. It, but if, if your premise is the thing that's been missing from 2,000 years of art sales is this. And look, I've constructed, I've built this experiment. Our whole startup is this experiment that this missing ingredient, I've, we're onto it. I'm sure it's this. And I'm going to test it. And if I'm right, here's what's going to happen. And I just don't understand what that one narrow thing is, nor do I understand what that one, th- and how long have you been working on it for a little bit? And have you gotten that, that piece? And it shouldn't, even if you say it's going to be I'd even accept a completely non-technical solution because the technology might make it repeatable and might make it scalable, but it may not be required to make it possible. If you really thought it's about introducing people, then do it. You guys are art people. Do it manually and demonstrate that. Look what happens when someone does get connected with art they love. Boom, it takes off. But that, that's where you should be. I'm sorry. No, no. I, these are am all I off in the wrong direction here. No, 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 no. This is this is incredibly helpful. And hey, like as a young entrepreneur who didn't set out to be an entrepreneur, didn't <laughs> set out to be a tech person or a startup person, but wanted to solve a problem I care really deeply about. This is great advice. I actually really appreciate that. Um, and hey, I mean, you know, if I can take a second to walk through the problem and solution, I'll say. People have been doing that manually. I don't want the for, problem. You know, I want to know what your premise yes. is yeah, yeah. and what and what evidence you've gathered so far that your premise is correct. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, but to your point of what has been missing from the last 2,000 years of, of the art world. Okay, give it to here, me in two sentences. Give me two sentences, yeah. Riley. What's missing from the art world in the last 2,000 years? That you're Precise, going to solve. That, yeah. Sure. Precise, emotional connection between artists around the world and art lovers around the world. People can do what you say they can do manually, person to person in a very limited sense, but that's not scalable. You can't connect with an artist in a really personal way if they're in Kenya, but they're doing something that's really right for you. If Great. they're in Got it. Yeah. Now what do you what's your first generation experiment to solve that problem? In a couple sentences yeah. here. Sure. Well, the really exciting thing for me is that we're working directly with the artists to gather this information. We're working with artists everywhere to gather this information. And, um, you know, I started with the problem for users, but it's a problem for artists too. Artists don't want to be working with a local gallery that takes 50% if they can help it. They want to passively connect with people all around the world who appreciate their work, who are algorithmically curated to like what they do. And yeah, maybe buy it down the line. But that's what we do, right? So we are working with artists around the world, gathering data points from them that no one else has or seems to be interested in. You know, galleries, okay. you know, collect Got data points like price and size. And now you you have yeah. and you have a bunch of people who want art. You found mm-hmm. who want who, who who may want to engage with artists. Correct? You found mm-hmm. a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you're connecting them how? Yeah, well, that's what I was uh, gonna gonna work through. So, these artists are helping us build uh, a database. And again, it's not perfect. I'm not gonna say that. No, it's not okay. extensive. Okay, it doesn't need to be. That. I don't care about that. Yeah, but it is. But it is unique. It is proprietary, and it is self learning. Um, it gets at other subjective data points. You know, not just you know things like price and size, but artist identities, where they're you know where they're working. But what kinds of emotions does this engender? What are the actual words that people use to describe these works of art? the real kind of nuanced but quantifiable things that make us engage with an artist, right? And what are you doing from the, to find customers to collide them with these artists? Have you yeah. started that well, yet? Right now, 
Yeah, well, you, you, you made a good point earlier that we're actually starting with very few resources. Um, I mentioned that it's never been easier to do what we're doing, but it's also never been harder. Um, what we're building out now is the, is the technology, building out the database, building out the, the products, testing this with a limited but growing number of users who really like what we do. Um, we really want to get behind the ball on this first before we start rapidly trying to sell something that people don't actually want, right? Okay. I got, yeah. I, I'm ready. And, and I'm sorry, this has been, okay. this has been more uh, aggressive than I normally am. And, uh, and I apologize. Honestly, good. I, I apologize. Eh, no, it's Don't not. apologize. Oh, uh, yes. I'm, I just, I'm not like a beat you up type of guy. So, but listen, you need a little beating up here. So, sure, yeah. Uh, in my opinion, which you are welcome to ignore, but in my opinion, you have got to start getting real live human interaction with your idea. And you have this preconception, I can tell, that you've got to have these unique artists. You've got to have all the data points. You've got to be figuring out all that. Bullshit. You do not. Fake it. Make it up. Scrape the web. You don't need real people. To, the, 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 if you really are a smart kid, and are, are your other two co-founders, pardon me for calling you a kid, are your other two mm -hmm. co-founders, are they okay. also from Stanford? Is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're three really smart men. Um, so what I want you to use is stop using all those smarts to build databases and design structures and figure out data points. I want you to go back and spend 48 hours and do nothing but say, how can I, by next week, start getting a whole shitload of people colliding with this art data and seeing what the f happens? Stop thinking about this. I mean, you're, 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 you're data, you're making up the data points. You're going, I'm going to, maybe it has to do with how tall they are. Maybe it's, we need to have what medium it is. You do, who knows? Make it, make up, have fake artists, scrape art that's not real. It's other people's art. Fake the database because you don't, doesn't need to be real right now. Right now you're trying to understand. You have this fundamental premise that says if we have this great data of art and we have all the, the different points we can connect people and we have all the people, we learn their points and we match them, there's going to be this magic explosion. Well, I promise you, the first time you do it, there's going to be this, here's the explosion. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. And you're going to go, oh, what happened? Either is our premise wrong? No, no, we're confident. Let's try this one. You've got to start doing that. You've got to go faster and faster and faster and faster. I mean, here's my art. Okay. Oh, this is perfect. This is my art story. Okay. So, um, you know, the, 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 the school that I went to, I, I think Stanford has it too. It was, it was basically a 414 where you had like a, a fall semester, spring semester, and a, win, a short winter term. And one of my friends was studying with this really world famous artist, a sculptor. She was a sculptor. And she made these incredibly complex sculptures, like fractals almost. They took her months to do one. So the first day with the big fancy artist, she starts in and she's starting it. And she kind of has the base built. And maybe the first thing's coming up. And the, at the end of the day, the famous artist comes around and looks at it and goes, okay, and squishes the whole thing flat. And she goes, what are you doing? He goes, try it again tomorrow. So she works a little faster and she gets it up a couple, six inches, and he squishes it flat into the day. And each day, he just totally destroys it. And she gets the point, which is that building one thing over 30 days, she's not going to learn shit. That what he wants her to do is experiment, go different directions, try different things, make it crappy. But, and that's what you, as you, what you have to do with this startup is you've got to move much, much faster through the experimentation phase because you're trying to solve a problem which, by your own admission, no one has solved before. And if you think, oh, we know what it is, now we just need to build it, you're wrong. I mean, not, not that I know yeah. anything about art or even about your idea. I just know that your first take on it is wrong. And the people you mm -hmm. have who are the well many people who are helping you, you're not getting enough data. You've got to figure yeah. out some way to quickly launch something in some rudimentary, non-repeatable, non-scalable way mm -hmm. 
to mm-hmm. find out whether, in fact, you have a clue whether you're right or not. And, you know, I started off by, by mentioning at the very beginning of the intro how many people have tried to solve this problem. And if you come from the premise that, oh, we finally have the idea, <laughs> you don't. Um, that, that I've seen, a, I mean, really, I've personally been involved with a, a, a company who, 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 was try, who had the exact same thing, and they were pretty far along. They had a really interesting angle, and it still doesn't work. There's some fundamental thing they're missing, which someone, and hopefully it's going to be you and your co-founders, are going to figure out, but it's not going to come from, oh, my gosh, we have it. It's up right up here. Quick, let's build it, and, and, and we'll stand. It's going to be amazing how this is going to do. No, you're going to learn it by getting in there and trying stuff and be humbled by the fact that only 2% of high net worth people buy art. There's something broken there that's not easily simply fixed. Be humbled by the fact there's been a hundred different startups trying to democratize art. Be humbled by the money that's pouring into, as much as you trivialize it, NFTs trying to do that. This is a really hard problem. And the ones which are not, which everyone's been trying to crack for a long time are the ones you should be most scared about because this is not, no one's, I promise, this is not, no one's thought about it. This is, uh, everyone's tried, a million people have hammered on this. There's something about this that none of us really understand. There's some a fundamental reason why people aren't doing this. It is a broken system. Art galleries suck. I, I mean, apologies to any art gallery owners. Um, they do. It's just, you're right. It's a terrible way. And the evidence is how few people buy art. But you're not the first person to recognize this. Mm. You're not the first team to go after it. So you mm. have better be trying some dramatically rapid iteration ones to learn yeah. what is the fundamental broken piece and what are you doing to fix it? Yeah. <sighs> Good advice. Good yeah. advice. Come on. You're, I mean, you're, you're at the point now where you can do this, but goose, listen, you don't need to do it exactly mm-hmm. what I said, but I would back up and go, what can I, we can't wait to build this and have it ready. What can we do to fake it? It's yeah. startup 101. Figure out some mm-hmm. way to test your premise now, next week, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Behind the scenes, use paper and three by five cards and waving your hands and fake art and just do something to stumble on and, and, and decide in advance what success looks like. What, how will you know when this thing is taking off? Anyway, enough about, enough about this. You get the, you get the point, but, um, don't stop with the hand waving about, uh, all the problems and how this is going to be the unique one to solve it. Uh, you, you're going to get the, the exact same question from me that everyone's thinking, even if they don't say it, which is prove it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, there's only really one answer to that, which is, okay, we'll try and prove it. And what, here's your chance. I would love it, love it, if you came back in six months and go, hey, we showed you, Randolph. Okay? So there's your challenge. Prove me wrong. Okay. Show that you Sounds actually good. had it nailed. And in fact, you took this idea that you had, you hacked it together. It worked and you built it out. And oh my God, you are changing the art world. And I'll be the first person to buy a uh, piece of art from you. Or more realistically, it takes longer than six months. It's not this idea. It's three ideas from now. And we don't know what it is, but we, give, we keep trying. Yeah, well done. Yeah. That education... Getting somewhere after all. Well, try it. Yeah, it's good. Um, a lot That's of respect for a lot of respect for you. So listen, go go get them and uh, prove me wrong. Let me know. But again, start doing. You know, get make some progress. Mm-hmm. That'll make you guys okay. really pumped up, and it'll be a, a lot more. Look what we've done, rather than here's what we're thinking, and that right. that'll bring a lot more people on board for you. Riley. Well, that certainly that certainly sounds good to me. Good work. Um, at least you're starting. Most people just sit and dream. You're doing something about it. So mm-hmm. props for that. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Well, thank you again for your time. My pleasure. Good luck, Riley. Well, that's all for today's episode. That was a classic case of stop thinking and start doing. 
Don't fall in love with your idea, fall in love with the problem and figure out some way to quickly, cheaply and easily collide that idea with reality. I guess today, it took me giving Riley a little bit of tough love and hopefully it'll push him over the edge. So if you've got an idea and you might need a little bit of tough love, I'd love to have you as a guest on the podcast. Simply come to markrandolph.com forward slash guest to apply.